Beloved, today we focus on the figure of St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist is the first evangelizer for Jesus Christ. All the prophets in the Old Testament and all that was written in the Old Testament pointed to a Messiah. But they weren't sure who it would be. They only knew that the Messiah would come. John the Baptist is the first evangelizer. And today the church invites us to reflect on his figure. Reminding ourselves that we too are all called to be evangelizers for Jesus. And as we reflect on today's gospel, there are three important reminders that we should always take with us on our Advent journey and indeed for the journey of our faith lives. If you look at the figure of John the Baptist, the first thing we hear about him is that he lived in the wilderness. John the Baptist made the wilderness his home. Two steps back. When God the Father wanted to reveal himself to the people of Israel, he first had to take them out of Egypt and lead them into the wilderness. And there in the silence of the wilderness, God the Father would speak. God the Father would reveal himself. It's interesting that the letters that make up the word silent are the same letters that make up the word listen. Use moments of silence, beloved, whether in mass or at your home or in the office or wherever you are. Use those moments of silence to be your wilderness experience so as to listen to the voice of our God. When John lived in the wilderness, it was not just to listen to the voice of his God, but he was also sending a very clear message. It's interesting that the more we are blessed, it seems that we depend less on God. It's a strange irony of life that the God who blesses us with what we need, somehow because we have everything, God doesn't get the priority as he should. Prayer mass, things spiritual, get sent more and more to the end of the page. And yet this God who blesses us invites us to recognize his saving presence. When John lived in the wilderness, he was sending a message to the chief priests, the scribes, the Pharisees, and the other people who are comfortable. That are you willing to step away from the comfort zone and learn how to once again depend on God and listen to him. Isn't it a sad truth that too many people seek identity and affirmation because of what they have rather than who they are? We give ourselves worth based on the material things or the people in our lives. Rather than reminding ourselves, my true worth lies in the fact, the real fact, that I am a son, daughter, people of God. And when God calls us, he invites us to answer the question, with all the blessings I give you, with the people and things and experiences in your life, do you still put me first? Or do you hold on and cling to the material at the expense of the spiritual? I invite you sometime today when you go home, make a list of all the people in your life and give thanks for them. Of all the things God has blessed you with and give thanks to God. Of the many and various experiences we have had as we continue to grow. And then ask yourself one simple question. Are you prepared to step into the wilderness, step out of the comfort zone, so as to make more room for God in your lives. That's what John the Baptist did. He wasn't clouding himself, his mind, his heart, his body with anything material. He was making more and more room for the spirit of the living God to use him as an effective evangelizer for the coming and preparation of Jesus Christ for the people. You and I are always called to be evangelizers, beloved. But in order for us to be more effective, we have to put 
everything and everyone in priority. Scripture says, seek first the kingdom of God. Don't worry about anything else. Seek first his kingdom and watch the Lord use all of us in a mighty way as we prepare for his return. The second truth about John the Baptist, as he lived in the wilderness, stepping away from that which made him comfortable or that which made him famous, John had a strange diet. He fed on locusts and wild honey. Wild honey isn't bad. Ever had a locust? (laughs) I can tell you it's not bad. Once you get past that's actually a locust, and I'm putting something strange in my mouth, you just might like it. One of my favorite all-time heroes, no, not Batman or Superman, <clears throat> is Andrew Zimmern from the Travel Channel. You name it, you see it, you point to it, he's eaten it, and he's still alive, beloved. <laughs> There's probably some truth in what dietitians are, are saying. That if we in the West learn how to incorporate insects into our diet, it will solve the protein problem of the world. I'm not telling you now to go out and catch a few locusts. I'm just telling you what the dietitians are saying. But there's a certain truth behind what John was doing. A healthy body leads to a healthy spirit. In other words, beloved, when God calls us to be evangelizers, as we all are called, God says, do everything to protect your health, starting with your diet. There's now a national plan to get people to step away more and more from too much sugar and too much salt. Some of us who may have housekeepers will know only too well how many times we have to say, cut back on the salt. And yet we live in a country that gave the world Rastafarianism, the idol food, no salt, Rasta man no deal with salt. So we celebrate Rasta, we celebrate their music, we even have some of their food. Somehow we still take in too much salt. If we're going to be effective, we have to look after our bodies. My dear brothers, Please do not neglect your regular doctor's check. Do not neglect your blood tests. And do not neglect that special test that too many Jamaican men run from. If you don't know what it is, see me after Mass. (laughs) My dear sisters, you do so much. You carry such a heavy load. You make miracles every day in the household with the little you have or the plenty, and allow it to spread and share. But don't forget what I often share with you. What is often suggested and hopefully implemented on all airlines. If there is oxygen deprivation and the masks fall, what is the instruction? Put on your mask first. Then you deal with those around you. It is good to practice healthy living, but not just health of the body. But I dare say, beloved, practice health of the mind. Take the time to read inspirational slash spiritual books. Learn from them. Our Thursday evening group, Prayer, Praise, and Worship Ministry, we often reflect on spiritual books and also gospel readings. Find the time during the season of Advent to once again dive into Scripture. For it's one thing to hear Scriptures when you come to celebrate Mass. But find the time, make the time at home to listen to the voice of God. That is how we become like John the Baptist, stepping into the wilderness and choosing to listen to his voice. It is already challenging these times that we live in. And very often people are not aware of the darkness all around us. But if I may quote a line, beloved... Do not give in to the dark side. Use the lightsaber of scripture and the spirit to empty the mind of the darkness that's all around us. To allow the light of Christ to influence us. Because there's a certain truth. If we do not eat right, read healthily, 
Take time to exercise and rest. Beloved, a drooping body will lead to a drooping spirit. But a healthy mind and body cultivates a healthy spirit. And when people encounter us, they want to see what difference Jesus makes in our lives. Which then leads us to the third and final point. What was so different and attractive about John the Baptist? Why the crowds came to him. After all, others spoke about God, didn't they? Stories told of a group of people who gathered together to pray the rosary. At the end of praying the rosary, a visitor in their midst was asked to do the closing prayer. At the end of his prayer, he opened his eyes and he saw everyone in tears. And he said to them, why are you all crying? And they said, you prayed such a beautiful prayer. He thought, he pondered, he went back in his head, all the words he used, and he said to them, but I didn't say anything different or peculiar or special. And one young man said to him, it is not so much what you said, but when you prayed, we can tell that you have a real relationship with your God. I often remind you, beloved, we can teach and preach about Jesus. We can sing and dance for the Lord. It doesn't mean that our relationship with our God is where it should be. John the Baptist was different from the others who spoke about Jesus or spoke about the Messiah. Why? Two steps back. Remember when Mary went to visit Elizabeth? What did John do? He leapt in the womb. So he, even before he was born, knew there was something special that Mary was going to carry into the world. And they would grow up together as cousins. John would know Jesus personally. And because he knew who Jesus was personally, when he spoke, it was because of the authority and love that he had for his father, but also the love that he had for his Jesus. Therefore, when he spoke, beloved, people recognized a difference in John the Baptist that the others could not carry over. When you and I speak, do people recognize that we have a real, authentic relationship with God? There are too many people who go to church whose relationship with God is shallow and superficial. That should not be said of any of us. We are given time to draw close to God so that as we learn how to grow in love with him, like John the Baptist, we will have the courage to share him with those around us. But be warned, beloved. As evangelizers, we are given a two-sided coin. On one side, like John the Baptist, when we choose to listen to our God and share him with others, people will be attracted to us. They will want what they see, what we have. They will want that joy, that peace, that strength, and that faith. And they will be drawn to us the way the people were drawn to John the Baptist. Give thanks for them. But make no mistake... Turn the coin around, like the chief priests, like the scribes, like the Pharisees, like those in the crowd who stood at a distance, there will be those who decide to step away from us. Why? They do not wish to be challenged by the word of God. They do not wish to make that step to draw close to God. They do not wish... In the word that John the Baptist used, the same word that Jesus used when he first started to preach, they do not wish to repent. They prefer to stay as they are because if they dare to draw close to you, to us, they will then have to ponder, am I ready to draw close to God and to live that life that God is asking? We will fail and fall even as we try to draw close to God, but that should not prevent us from being effective witnesses for him. When John heard the voice calling him to step into the wilderness and be that voice to prepare the people for the coming of the Messiah, that same spirit rests on all of us. And that spirit invites us to draw close to God so that as we draw close to him, we may then have the courage to share him with those around. It will mean others will be attracted and others will either stay distant or they run. What do we do? We pray for them. We love them. And we keep praying for the grace 
to be lights shining brightly for God's kingdom. To our returning God of light, love, and joy be glory and praise forever and ever.